YouTube, what is up, man? Game management, clock management is what Madden players excel at. And honestly, I really believe that we could help real NFL teams, real college teams, even real high school teams learn clock management better and be better at it. You know, and that, that's pretty much what what our biggest strength is when it comes to football. It's the biggest uh, crossover uh, simulation part of Madden essentially is knowing how to manage the clock and, and knowing you know how much game is left and how to control it and then how you have control of it and this game is pretty much one of the biggest examples of this I actually play my man my he's a sub to my uh, twitch channel if you guys want to watch these games live that link is below to twitch uh, and actually is from part of Delaware County Philadelphia that I am from as well or close by at least uh, so he, he's a he's a good guy friend of mine so we're definitely playing and he definitely runs um, a similar offense to mine pretty much a little bit different running blast and tight offset and things of that nature but mostly I want to tell you guys this gameplay pretty much because of how I managed the clock in the last drive I pretty much put together the perfect drive little hiccups you're never gonna have the most beautiful drive, but the perfect drive to uh, close this game out in the fourth quarter but I'll let you guys see it I'll let you guys show how the entire game went down man like I said you want to hit these games live twitch.tv hit that like button I dropped a video about my offense. If you haven't watched that below, it is in my videos. It's probably the video before this. Uh, and if you want me to do a defensive video, I want to get this video to 400 likes and I will drop the defensive version. Pretty much show you guys how I'm playing defense right now. Because like I said, you guys are still playing man. I'm still playing man. We all love it. So I want to help you guys get better. So like I said, hit that like button and comment below on if you want to see a defensive video. But let's get right into it. Let's get into this game. Now I'll tell you, man, Maya is going to run pretty much pretty much the same offense as I do, but it's going to this is going to be a little bit different, a little bit unrefined, so to speak. Uh, in the first play, I have Moss, but like I said, we use that as a decoy. They're all going to cover Moss or blitz everybody. So you get a big play right out the gate if you use Moss. That's the only way I still find it viable. Again, unless you're playing super bums, that you can just throw the ball up to uh, to Moss and get big plays, but. Um, so also when you play somebody or you actually play somebody that has played you before or watch you play Whatever was familiar with your, what you're doing. You kind of got to be one step ahead and right here I called the wrong play just called bad routes. He had good defense out there. We get sacked So that's our first drive down the down the shoot just like that um, The one thing about Vic man, you cannot run away from Dwight Franey, Simeon Rice, Julius Peppers, Lawrence Taylor. You can't run away from anybody anymore. Maybe one set, but not even First play, he goes to Moss, but we sack him. We bring everybody, get to a third and long, and we're going to go ahead and, and get off the field here. Should have got a lurk, but we knocked the ball away with Calvin Johnson at linebacker. Um, so we'll get we trade punts. You trade punts right away, start the game. Just kind of filling out, just kind of, you know, getting the feel for your opponent. That's what it's about. Is I mean, I need to put my enforcers on special teams. Uh, now, he's going to run a little, like, two two three six two four five not a lot of people in the box i'll tell you i want to run the ball for 10 yards to carry pretty much uh, the majority of this game you know and, and man 20 is so if you're going to let somebody run for 10 yards to carry you're why would anybody ever pass you know that's pretty much how it feels we see another read option i have chris johnson as my backup running back we could use a new chris johnson honestly that's a card we don't talk a lot about but he's great as i try to hit this crossing route and just I get the bad animation. I got to do a better job of bringing that, that wide receiver back. I talk about it all the time, but the animation they gave me was fall back, and they gave his DB a animation to reach in front of me. So that's just all user skill right there. I could have had a better animation on the catch and make that a touchdown, but I did not, and we are done with the first quarter. So a turnover in the red zone as he runs backwards because he was going to get hit does not get this field goal because of taking that many losses on the blast he cannot kick this field goal 49 yard line he winds up having to punt so uh, he was afraid enforcer slid right there um but he slid he lost like 12 yards so he got out of field goal range so we're, so it's still zero zero so we're cool that that turnover did not hurt me but you cannot turn the ball over in red zone and consistently expect to win in any madden as i hit the crossing route here to randy moss i told you man dagger is one of the best plays i hope you guys are liking that video that breakdown of how i run dagger and uh blast to, to be effective in madden 20 right now uh there it is blast getting outside michael vick swag on him just a little bit point at him that's what you gotta do you gotta break you gotta make him mad next play we're gonna go ahead we're gonna look for this corner route why I decided to feel ball in the air a little bit too long. Once again, my animation was fall back and he jumped and picked it off. Two picks inside the red zone. 
you're not going to win games like that. You just even if you run the ball, I could have six points if I just run the ball and take what's there, honestly. Uh, but I forced two throws into the red zone, two throws into the end zone. That's the hardest spot on the field to score, and they wound up being interceptions. So that's rough. But I said it's still 0 0. He hasn't scored. I feel good. Uh, we send everybody there, and he just threw the ball in front of my DB. I don't know what that was, but it looks pretty good. Next play, he throws a little drag. He's going a little more tight offset. Tight offset, I don't want to say it gives me trouble, but it's kind of annoying if that's if that makes any sense. Like, it's just, there's all these hitches, the drags, the, obviously the corner route, the rollout, max protect. He's closing in on, on getting some points here before half. Hitting this flat route, I miss a tackle, and Torrey Holt's in field goal range. So now you just can't give up the touchdown. That's pretty much what, That's pretty much where your mindset shifts. No touchdown here. We cannot give it up. I'm cool 3-0, and that's what we're going to give up, the 3-0 at halftime. So, like I said, I, I left at least six points on the board. Cannot throw interceptions in the end zone. Uh, second half, we're going to come out with a different, a different intensity. Mike Evans right after the quarterback. A different vibe. Read option. We're all over it. Uh, we're all over Michael Vick in the backfield. Um, get to a third and 12. He's going to laser this streak route. Like, I just, just like, ah, just guard that W and you're cool. But he converts there. Gets out of there with Michael Vick here. Uh, try to make a good job making tackle, man. Just swarm. When someone's in open field, man, the biggest advice I can give you is make them slow down. If they slow down, the rest of your team will catch them. You have 10 other people that are 95 plus speed. If you make them slow down, change direction, use any type of moves, the rest of your defense will catch them. You know, just don't overcommit and allow your boys to help you, man. Always lead the ball carrier to help, whether that be the sideline or other players. Uh, that's the best way I can give you advice as far as open field tackling. Um, and we hold him. We get him to a third down right here. Uh, he only puts two wide receivers out. We're all over. It's a Davion Clowney sacks Michael Vick in the backfield. And that, that he's going to force a three. Now it is six nothing. Now this is the turning point of the game. This is when I've got to make a decision on offense, defense, uh, and, and what do you want with this drive? So I have four minutes, I'm down by six points. He still has three timeouts, I still have three timeouts. Now, when you break it down, it's pretty much, it's pretty easy. Each play could be 30 seconds, right? So four minutes, 30 seconds, that's eight plays. Now you gotta remove a play for, you gotta remove, add a play for the two minute warning. So nine plays, uh, if you don't stop the clock with any of these plays. So nine plays, then he has three timeouts. So we could actually add those three timeouts and make it 12 plays. You could finish a whole quarter, even with the two minute warning and the uh, and all three of his timeouts with around 12 plays if you run these correctly. But you have to decide the before the drive. Am I gonna score quick and then try to play defense? Am I gonna take the clock into consideration? Uh, and, or, and like I said, or you make this a, the last drive of the game. You make this the last drive of game, you score a touchdown, you put your nuts on the field and say, listen, I did that. You have no chance of uh, another rebuttal. You have no chance of the ball, uh, you know, no chance to win the game with a field goal, no chance to win the game with a touchdown. That's a decision you have to make. If you make that decision, this is the last drive of the game. You can waste your timeouts. You can uh, really take your time. It's four down territory the entire drive. You know that. And that's the decision I make. I'm going to make this the last drive of the game. I'm going to drop my nuts. I'm going to make the decisions. And, and with that being said, I'm going to run. Because a run or any dump off pass is an automatic at least 25 to 30 seconds off the clock. So, so every time you run, if you're getting positive yards, the clock is going with you. And before you know it, you'll be around the two-minute warning, and then you'll have to go ahead and score. Also, it is we're going to find out if he uses his timeouts or not. Because if you're up seven, I feel like I, I, I'm going to put my back up against the wall. I'm not going to give you an extra time with the timeout. I'm going to go ahead and try to get some things done. So let's check it out. So like I said, man, we're going to go ahead and just try to get the clock running. We're going to hit this in route right here. Boom. That's a nice play. We got to take 30 seconds off the clock. As you see, I snap with six seconds there. Nice little inside zone or read option is pretty much what I ran to beat him. Once again, we're going to milk this under 20 seconds. I could have even took more off the clock right there, uh, but we're going to run the ball into his territory. So right there, boom, here goes another 30 seconds. We're closing in on a two minute warning. So with that, boom, another run, another 10, 12 yards, easy. 
we're in field goal range but i don't i can't win with a field goal there's nothing i can do here another run because that's going to take it to the two minute warning just like that so we're in four down territory everything's on the line we'll see if he uses his timeouts or not me personally um i don't think i would use my timeouts unless somebody got inside the 10 yard line where uh they couldn't run the rest of the game out um here we go we roll out with the corner route we don't take we'll take our run with vic why do i take my run with vic? i could have thrown to a couple people but the run is not a big gain and i'm gonna keep that clock turning keep that clock turning get me to 120 on the clock another run we'll milk this down to around 10 seconds right here uh when we snap the ball and that's what we want uh we have plenty of time there's no runoff in mutt but i actually get sacked right here i believe that's mean joe green so we get to a third and 18 we're going to go ahead and we're just going to scramble with Vic right here. Try to get out. Try to get some blocks from my people, but I can't. I get hit, but my man right there, my man Brandon Brooks is on the ball. We don't fumble. I'm going to call a timeout here. This is the last drop. I'm not going to need those timeouts, really. Let everybody catch their breath. That's my biggest thing. Catch your breath. Let Michael Vic, uh, you know, get his stamina back, and we have a fourth and ten. Now he's been running a lot of cover, too. You, this is when you need to pull out some dots. Everyone, and that dagger is cute, but you got to pull out some dots somewhere. I know his user is going to go right to left to guard the post route. I'm going to hit this in route to Evan Ingram right back over the middle, right by the spy, possession catch, first down. You got to pull out just a little wrinkle when you need to, especially when people watch you play or people know your play style and know the route you want to go to. Just a little wrinkle. You need a wrinkle for all situations. Here will milk, and this was perfect inside the five. We are on a one-yard line. We're not going to call a timeout. We have blast. We have the best play in the game. This is going to be three blasts no matter what. So I'm going to go here and just call blast, get it done. And, and really, and this is the question, when do I snap the ball here? Do I snap at 10? I, I decided 10. I still have my timeouts. I want to snap at 10. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to get in the end zone touchdown. Just like that. Boom. So we were, we took off four minutes of the clock. We scored with nine seconds. We'll kick this extra point to go ahead and take the lead. Now you start thinking, man, he's going to have a 99 kick power kicker. Uh, nine seconds is... Uh, not a lot of time, but it's one play and a timeout. So one thing I've done in past videos that I didn't do was kick this ball in bounds. You cannot kick this out of bounds because every little second counts. So I'm going to sky kick and go all the way to the left. And that's going to put it in the air for a while. My boys will get down there. Now, he could fair catch this or run. He chooses to run, get a couple, but it takes two seconds off the clock. So now instead of him having nine seconds, he's going to have seven seconds. That's a huge difference. You're literally one, you have one play. And, and honestly, a deep pass play can take seven seconds off the clock. So it might even be one play right here. He's going to stick and blast. Uh, like I said, I go back to the, go back to my philosophy. If you stay in front of him, you make them slow down. You make them change direction. Your boys will catch up. And we get a fumble, and I do not recover. He calls timeout. So we got one play left. Stay in front of him. Do not allow the big play. Um, just allow your boys to help you, whether it be the sideline, whether it be the other 10 people on the field. And you're going to see here that I, I really have nobody in the box. I'm going to click on Dion. actually. I moved Taylor Mays all the way back. Click on Dion, run him back, and just don't allow him to change his direction. And there's my boys for the GGs. For the GGs. Now, I said that game was pretty much all about that last drive. Making a decision before your drive. Is this going to be the last drive of the game? Am I going to try to hurry up and score and then play defense? Making a decision before the drive can, can lead to better decision making throughout the drive. Because you know it's four down territory. You know you want to waste clock. Have a plan. Execute. And hit that like button, by the way.